Hey everyone, welcome to Christ Kids TV. We begin together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray that you would help us this Lenten season to turn our hearts to you. Please open us now as we learn about your word and give us strength and faith to serve you and others as you lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. Dr. Smudge. Yeah, yes. Hello, hello, hello. I see you are here today. Hi, uh, doctor. Yes, and why are you here today? Oh, let me see if I can guess. Uh, I'm looking here in your history. It looks as though you uh, ha you ate styrofoam. Yes, this is why you're no. here. No. No? Oh, no. that's not it. Let me check my records. It must be, oh, I see. Oh, this one is particularly interesting. It looks as though you have a... A low credit score. Yes. No, that's a, no, oh no, no, that's not it. Oh, no, what is it that you are here uh, for? What's wrong? Tell me, please. <sighs> okay. Oh, let me so, hear. doctor. Yes. So I feel like God is calling me to do this thing, and I just don't want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so frustrated. You, uh, you said. Your fishing poles baited? No, no, I'm frustrated. Uh, your tires are deflated? Uh, huh? What? No? I'm frustrated. Oh, your cheese isn't grated. <laughs> frustrated. Oh, why didn't frustrated. you why didn't you say so? You're frustrated. Well, let us examine your heart. Here we go. I'll do this right here and see. Oh, yes, I can see. Uh, it looks as though you are frustrated. Yes, I'm mm, frustrated. I have a prescription for that. Oh, As we examine yeah. your heart, we remember that God calls us to great things. And when God calls us great things, God calls us to great things because God knows we can do great things. So therefore, my prescription to you is follow God and do what God says and you will be less frustrated. Mm. You really think if I do this thing, even though I don't want to, but if I follow God and trust that I won't be frustrated anymore, that I'll be more obedient and things will work out. Precisely! And Dr. Ah. Smudge wins again. I hope to not see you again soon. Okay, thank you, Dr. Smudge. Absolutely. Have a great day. Thank you. Hello. for the memory break. Hey everyone, I'm Miss Kate and I'm so excited to teach you our memory verse for Lent. Lent is the time to prepare our hearts so that we'll be ready to celebrate the most important holiday of all. Do you know which holiday I'm talking about? It's Easter. And do you know why Easter is such an important holiday? I'll give you a hint. It has nothing to do with bunnies or egg hunts or even baskets full of candy and presents. What makes Easter so special and important is Jesus. Easter is when we celebrate Jesus dying on the cross and coming back to life because he loves us so much. And because Jesus did that for us, we're able to live with God in heaven one day. There's a special verse in the Bible that tells all about God's plan to save us through Jesus. In fact, it's one of the most well-known verses in the whole entire Bible. So I bet you've heard it before and you might even already know it by heart. It's John chapter three, verse 16, and it says this, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but have eternal life. Let's learn some motions to go along with our verse. Are you ready? Come on, stand up with me. Okay, so the first part 
says, God so loved the world. And we're going to put our arms over our chest like this to show the love that God has for everyone in the whole world. The next part says that he gave his only son. And this is talking about Jesus. So we are going to put our arms out like this to make a cross with our body. So that everyone, for this part, we're gonna put our arms up like this and point our fingers. We're gonna make our arms go in a big circle like this, like we're pointing to everyone in the whole world. Good. Who believes in him, we're gonna point up to heaven where Jesus and God live, won't perish, cross your arms in an X, but have eternal life. And we're gonna put our arms up and wave them in the air because this is good news. Are you ready? Let's try it together one more time. You can repeat after me again. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. Great job. This verse tells all about how God loves you and me and everyone in the whole world so much that he sent Jesus to save us. And that's exactly what we celebrate on Easter. When Jesus died on the cross and came back to life three days later, Jesus saved you and me and everyone in the whole world. And when we believe in Jesus, and what he did for us on the cross. And when we believe in God, we'll have eternal life. That means that one day we'll live in heaven with God and Jesus forever and ever and ever. Now I hope you see why Easter is the most important holiday that we celebrate. And I hope that you'll join us on Christ Kids TV all let long to make sure that your heart is ready to celebrate.
Devotional time with Mr. Mike. Hi guys, I'm Mr. Mike. Welcome to devotional time. Do you know what time of year it is? Lent. That's right. And do you know what Lent is? Well, I'll tell you what Lent is not. Lent is not this. Ooh, that's Lent for the dryer. Ooh, I'm talking about Lent. L-E-N-T. And that's the time of year when we prepare our hearts and we prepare our minds and we prepare our soul for the best day ever. Easter! That's right. Lent is all about getting ready for Easter. Some fun things that people do during Lent. Wear purple. That's right. I'm going to wear purple every time we're together until Easter. And some people give up things for Lent. I don't know if you know that, but it helps people think about what Jesus Christ gave up for us. So some people might even give up things like candy bars. What? Mm -hmm. They'll actually do that for Lent. Well, what we're going to do are challenges. Yeah, I'm going to give you guys a challenge every week during Lent. Are you ready for the first challenge? Okay, here we go. Week one is all about self-confidence, okay? We really want you to think about how great and special you are to God. And for each one of us, he gave us very special gifts. So this week, I want you to get some pen and a paper. Get the pen and the paper and write down two, two things that's really something you think you're special at. And write them down. Like courage. Maybe you have a lot of courage. What do you mean? Well, when you learned how to ride a bike, did you ever fall off? Yeah. And you're like, oh man. And you're thinking, well, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to learn how to ride a bike. And it took courage to do that, right? Because you're going to face something and then you're going to see that your courageousness helped you learn how to ride a bike. Write that down. So write down two things that are special about you and then share that with your family. And then they'll say, you know what? That's right. Here's, and, and, and they may even say something else special about you you might not even know. So that's the challenge this week. Self-confidence. We're going to think about what's great about us. Because that's how God thinks about us. I hope you have a great week. And I'll see you next time. Bye. After nine, after nine.
Hey boys and girls, Pastor Tenny here. I want to introduce you to my kitty. This is Shadow. We'll see how long she cooperates. And, well, oh, not very long. Oh, she's gone. That's it. Well, fortunately, we only have one pet in the house. Could you imagine being trapped in a place with all kinds of animals? Imagine the mess everywhere and the smell. Well, Noah was kind of like that. Noah had to live on that ark that God told him to build for a long time because it rained for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. That's a lot of water. Boy, I bet he was frustrated. He was probably so frustrated and his family on the ark with him, well, they were all probably frustrated. Well, we may not have to deal with floods or boats full of lots of animals or things like that, but even life today can be frustrating, can be hard. Have you ever tried to learn to play a new instrument? Boy, I remember when I was trying to learn to play the piano and the organ, how difficult it was, how much time it took, and oh, I'd get so frustrated, and my parents would get frustrated with me because I didn't want to practice, but eventually I did, and I did the right thing, and it all worked out. Have you ever felt sad? Maybe your, your heart hurts because something has happened. Maybe somebody close to you has been sick or died, or a good friend of yours got upset with you. Well, it's easy to get frustrated, and it's hard then to be obedient to God's command to love one another, especially when people aren't nice to us or when bad things happen to us. And that's okay. You know why? Because even Jesus had a difficult time. He struggled and he was hurt and he was beaten and he eventually died for us. But he did what was the right thing to do because it's what God wanted him to do. And that's what God wants of us. He wants us to do the right things. He wants us to listen to him. He wants us to obey, to follow God's command. And I know sometimes it's hard. What do you do when things get hard? What do you do when you struggle? Do you pray? Maybe read the Bible? Do you, do you talk with your parents? Maybe sometimes you just sit and you're still and listen to God. Maybe that's what you do. You know, all those people in the Bible like Noah and Jonah and David, they all had difficult times and their hearts hurt and they needed to get checked up on their heart and on their thinking. And God always found a way to reach them and fix what was broken and help bring them back to God. He always did, but it wasn't always easy. So it probably won't be easy for you either. It's not for me. Difficult things are very challenging, so I look for ways to connect with God. Pray, read the Bible, I talk with other people, and sometimes I'm just still, and I just listen for God. You know, sometimes when I'm hurting, I just pick up shadow, and I just hold her or I give her a treat. She's not interested in a treat right now. But sometimes, I, well, sometimes it's comforting when I pick up Shadow. I hope that you find something that helps you when you are frustrated. Maybe talk to God. You can always call one of us pastors. We're happy to listen as well. God bless you this day and always. If you are one of our older friends, skip to the timestamp below. If you're one of our younger friends, wait till the timer runs out to start your lesson. Hey everyone, it's Miss Kate. This week we began the season of Lent. Lent is the 40 days plus Sundays that lead up to Easter. You've heard a bunch of us on Christ Kids TV today tell you that Lent is a time to prepare your heart so that you'll be ready to celebrate Easter. But what does it mean to prepare your heart? Well, 
It means to take a look at our own lives and make sure that we're doing what God wants us to do and that we're becoming the people that God wants us to be. So each week, we will be looking deep inside our hearts so that we can bring out good qualities that make God happy. And we'll also be checking to see if there are any not so good qualities that we should get rid of for good. So, are you ready for your first checkup? Today we're learning that God wants us to be obedient. Obedient means to listen and do what you're told to do. Let's practice being obedient. I'm gonna ask you to do some silly things and I want you to listen and do them. Ready? Stick out your tongue. Shake your head. Touch your nose. Make your silliest face. Good job being obedient. There's probably many people in your life that you obey, like your mom, dad, grandparents, teachers, and coaches. We obey people that we love and trust, but it's not always easy to be obedient. Hmm, that reminds me of someone in the Bible. Today's Spark Story is all about someone who loved and obeyed God by building a big boat and gathering lots and lots of animals. I know you've heard this story before. So on the count of three, I want you to tell me who it is. One, two, three. That's right, Noah. God told Noah to build an ark, which is like a giant, huge boat, the size of a cruise ship. And then God told him to fill it with two of every kind of animal. It also had to hold Noah's family and lots and lots of food. Did Noah obey or not? Let's read the story to find out. Today we're gonna to be reading the Noah's Ark story in our Spark Bible. And it begins on page 20. A long time had passed since God created the world. People forgot about God, except for one man. His name was Noah. He loved and obeyed God. I am very sad that people have forgotten about me, God said to Noah. I'm going to bring rain to flood the earth, lots and lots of rain. Build yourself a huge boat of cypress wood. Noah did just what God said and made a big, big boat with lots of rooms. Noah was 600 years old when he entered the boat with his wife, their sons, and their sons' wives. God brought two of every kind of animal to the boat. Elephants and zebras, lions and tigers, pigs and giraffes, dogs and cats, deer and rhinos, bears and cows, horses and goats, lambs and monkeys, all came two by two. All different kinds of animals, birds, and creepy crawly things came to the boat. Noah took all of them into the boat and then the door shut behind them. Inside the big boat, the lions roared, the dogs barked, and the birds chirped. It was stuffy and stinky. It was muggy and hot. On the outside, it rained and rained. It rained big, giant drops and little baby drops for 40 days and 40 nights. The rains came down and the floodwaters came up. 
the water splashed on the sides of the big boat and pushed it up and down for 150 days. Finally, it rested on top of a tall mountain. Noah waited and waited until God said to him, come out of the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Noah's family and all the animals came off the boat. They put their feet on dry land. They ran and skipped and jumped. They twirled and danced in the sunlight. They thanked God for the land and God blessed them. Noah's family grew and grew. The animals and the birds and the creepy crawly things filled the earth again. God painted a rainbow, a brilliant red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet across the sky and promised, never again will water flood the earth. Whenever you see the rainbow in the clouds, I will see it too and I will remember. So, did Noah obey God? He sure did. Every step of the way, Noah obeyed God, even when it was hard. When life gets hard, it's easy to get frustrated. Frustrated is that angry, discouraged or upset feeling that you get when you're not able to do something or when things don't go the way that you wanted them to. Have you ever felt frustrated before? I know I have, and I have to imagine that Noah probably felt frustrated sometimes too. Like when he was doing the right thing and obeying God and building the ark exactly like God told him to, while everyone else was doing the wrong thing and had forgotten all about God. That must have been very frustrating. And what about when Noah was on the ark with all the animals? First, it rained and rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Think about when it rains where you live and you're stuck inside. I bet you feel pretty frustrated and ready to get outside and play. Imagine what it must have been like for Noah and his family and all the animals to be floating around on the ark for 150 days. That must have been really, really frustrating. But that's not all. After the floodwaters cleared, Noah still had to wait and wait and wait until God told him that it was time to come out of the ark. Waiting can be so hard and it's easy to get frustrated, especially when you don't know how long you'll be waiting for. Noah had a lot to be frustrated about, but he didn't let his frustrations get the best of him. Instead, Noah loved, trusted, and obeyed God. And because Noah was obedient, God kept Noah, his family, and all the animals safe on the ark. God also made a covenant, which is a promise to never flood the earth again. And as a symbol of this covenant, God put a beautiful rainbow in the sky. Let's pray and ask God to help us be like Noah. At the end of my prayer, you'll hear me say, and all God's children said, and after you hear me say those words, I want you to say amen with me, okay? All right, let's bow our heads. Dear God, we want to be obedient like Noah. Help us to love, trust, and listen to you when we feel frustrated. 
And all God's children said, Amen. Today we learn that God wants us to be obedient. Noah reminds us that we should always listen and obey God. God created us, loves us more than anyone, and will always tell us to do the right thing. So we have every reason to love, trust, and obey God. Is your heart ready? TV is going to help us with a heart check so we can find out. I'll see you next week. Bye. Heart check with TV. Everybody gets frustrated from time to time, but we don't want the things that frustrate us to take over our heart. When we take our frustrations to God, God takes that frustration out of our hearts and puts obedience in. TV, sap that frustration out of our heart and put obedience in. I'm here. Let's do this. Thanks, TV. My heart feels so much better now. No problem. Goodbye. Thanks for joining us this week on Christ Kids TV. Hey everyone, I'm Miss Kristen and I want to welcome you to our first Christ Kids TV episode of Lent. What is Lent again? Well, Lent is the 40 days plus Sundays that lead up to Easter. And you learned from Mr. Mike in devotional time that Lent is a time to prepare our hearts so that we are ready to celebrate Easter. But what does it mean to prepare your heart? Well, it means that we need to take a look at ourselves and make sure that we are living the way that God wants us to live. Each week, we are going to do a heart check and look deep inside our hearts to bring out the good qualities that make God happy. We'll also be checking for maybe the not so good qualities that we need to get rid of for good. So are you ready for your first check? Here we go. This week, we are going to talk about being obedient to God. It can be so hard to be obedient all the time. Do you have a hard time listening to like your parents and teachers, coaches, and following the rules? Me too. Sometimes I get so frustrated because I want to do stuff the way I want to do it and not worry about obeying someone else's rules. Except here's the thing that I found out. Those rules, they're actually meant to keep me safe and healthy and not just like physically healthy, but also to protect my heart and make sure that it is full of the stuff that is pleasing to God. There is a story about a man in the Bible who was so incredibly obedient to God and it is amazing that he had the strength to follow the rules that God gave him. Know his name? Noah. I bet most of you know the story of Noah in the ark. So Noah built this big boat and animals like dogs, monkeys, sharks, oh, some raccoons, and some snakes. Yeah. They all came on two by two. Noah's family got on the boat. It rained 40 days, the earth flooded, stopped raining. Dove flew out, brought a branch back, everybody got off the boat. Yeah, pretty straightforward. You all know the story. How much do you really know about this story and just how obedient Noah had to be? I mean, okay, so like we all know they were on the boat for 40 days and 40 nights, right? That's actually just how long it rained. It rained all the time and we're not talking like just a little gentle rain oh no it poured down rain for 40 four zero, 40 days and 40 nights after those first 40 days and nights it slowed down but it was still raining until it eventually stopped you know i bet you think they were just on the ark for 40 days but they were not in your deep blue Bible, 
on page 10, it actually tells you, ooh, they were on the ark for, you ready? 377 days. Can you imagine? That is more than a year on a boat with your family, with it raining, and all these animals that gotta be fed and you gotta clean up after them. Ooh, can you even imagine this? That had to have been so hard for Noah not to get frustrated and remember that he was obeying God. Here's another fun fact. God told Noah to build a boat, right? Seems simple enough. But do you know how many rules Noah actually had to obey? God gave him a lot of stuff. In Genesis chapter 6, verses 14 to 16, listen to this. Okay. So make a wooden ark. Got that? All right. Make the ark with nesting places and cover it inside and outside with tar. I'm going to guess that the nesting places were for all the birds. This is how you should make it. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. All right. Make a roof for the ark. There's a rule. A lot of boats don't have a complete roof over them, but okay. Make a roof for the ark and complete it one foot from the top. Put a door in its side, not in the front, not in the back, on its side. In the hold below, make the second and third decks. Those are pretty specific instructions and a lot of extra work for Noah to make sure he got the measurements exactly right. I mean, I bet he got kind of frustrated when he was like, well, it's 74 feet wide. Do you think that's good enough? Well, if God told you to make it 75 feet wide, you better make it 75 feet wide. But, you know, even if Noah got frustrated, which is understandable, he still knew that God had a plan and he needed to be obedient to it. In fact, in the same chapter, chapter 6, verse 22, tells us Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Now, this is just kind of a cool, fun fact. I found this video. Check it out to get an idea of just how big Noah's Ark actually was. This is the Ark. The Ark is really, 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 really big. You can see here that the Ark is bigger than a football field, a car, an airplane, all, and a house all combined. It's about as big as this massive submarine. Okay, y'all. That was a big boat. Ooh. All right, so last part. Remember how the end of the story, um, Dove was released, flew back to the ark with a branch, and everybody got off the ark. Woo! It actually wasn't quite that easy. Noah started by sending out a raven, which is a different kind of bird. After everything had stopped raining, you know, the waters are starting to subside. Wasn't the right time. You know how many more times Noah had to send out a bird? Three more times. Four times he had to send out a bird before it finally was the right time. And don't forget, everyone had been on the boat for a year at this point. So they had to have been so frustrated. But man, Noah waited and was still obedient to God until it was the right time time. And then finally, everybody could get off the boat. Oh, they had to have been pretty excited about that. Well, if there's anything that we learned from Noah, it's that God wants us to be obedient to him and his plan and not get frustrated with God's plan, even when it's hard. So, now that we know that our hearts need to be willing to be obedient and not frustrated with God's plan, 
TV is going to do our heart check for us. Check it out and I will see you next time. Bye. Heart check with TV. Everybody gets frustrated from time to time, but we don't want the things that frustrate us to take over our heart. When we take our frustrations to God, God takes that frustration out of our hearts and puts obedience in. TV, sap that frustration out of our heart and put obedience in. I'm here. Let's do this. Thanks, TV. My heart feels so much better now. No problem. Goodbye. Thanks for joining us this week on Christ Kids TV.